In this video, we will formulate the definition of the derivative of a function by talking about relieving knee pain. Let's think about the scenario where a person takes 400 milligrams of ibuprofen. In this case, the function f of t equals 400 times 0.71 to the t represents the amount of ibuprofen in the body in milligrams in terms of the number of hours elapsed since taking the 400 milligram dose. A question we might be interested in is, how quickly is ibuprofen leaving the body four hours after being administered? To help us think about the scenario, let's make a graph of our function. We'll have the horizontal axis be the elapsed time in hours since the ibuprofen was administered, and the vertical axis be the amount of ibuprofen in milligrams. Now let's draw the graph of f of t. We see that at 4 hours, the amount of ibuprofen remaining in the body is about 101.6 mg. We can also see this on the graph. Next, we need to try to approximate the instantaneous rate at t equals 4 by computing an average rate over a time interval starting at t equals 4 hours. In this scenario, the average rate is a change in the amount of ibuprofen per a change in time. To start, we'll use a 3-hour change in time. On the graph, delta t can be represented by the length of a red arrow from the point on the function at time 4. Here, delta t is 3. Delta f would be the corresponding length of this blue arrow, which would compute by subtracting f evaluated at 4 from f evaluated at 7. So the average rate is the change in the values of the function, divided by 3. Since we have a formula for f, we can evaluate the function at t equals 7 and t equals 4, compute the difference, and divide. This gives us an average rate of negative 21.755 milligrams per hour. This computation would give us an accurate measure of the rate of change if the rate was constant over the three-hour time interval. However, this isn't the case, so this isn't a very precise approximation of the instantaneous rate of change. However, we can make this approximation more precise by making the interval of time smaller. Let's begin by making delta t smaller. Say, delta t is 2. We can, again, calculate the average rate of change by dividing the change in f by the change in t. So, when delta t is 2 hours, the average rate was negative 25.20 milligrams per hour. Let's zoom in a bit to see this better. We'll keep this image on the screen to compare with some other approximations. Now, let's look at what would happen if we used a smaller delta t. Here, delta t is equal to 1. We can compute the average rate of change over this interval by dividing the change in f by the change in t. So, when delta t is 1 hour, the average rate is negative 29.48 milligrams per hour. Let's zoom in a bit to see this better. We'll keep this image on the screen to compare with some other approximations. Now, let's look at what would happen if we used a smaller delta t. Here, delta t is equal to 1 half. We can again compute the average rate of change over this interval by dividing the change in f by the change in t. So, when delta t is 1 half hour, the average rate is negative 32 milligrams per hour. We'll zoom in a bit to see this better, and then keep this image on the screen. Then we could use a smaller delta t, say 1 quarter. This would give us an average rate of negative 33.36 milligrams per hour. And we'll save this picture too. Then we could use an even smaller delta t, say one-tenth. This would give us an average rate of negative 34.22 milligrams per hour. And we'll save this picture. And now we have five graphs that we can compare. From top to bottom, we can see how the amount of change in time was decreasing from two hours to one hour to a half to a quarter to a tenth of an hour. Let's take a look at the graphs. In our first graph, with delta t of two hours, we can see that the graph is curved, so the slope, and therefore the rate at which ibuprofen is leaving the body, 
is changing over the two-hour interval. When we used a delta t of one hour, the slope was changing over the interval. And the same was true when we used a delta t of a half hour. However, when we used a delta t of a quarter hour, the slope started to look constant. And with a delta t of a tenth of an hour, the slope looks nearly constant over the interval, so the ibuprofen is close to leaving the body at a constant rate. What would we see if we continued this process? When we use a delta t of one hundredth of an hour, the average rate at which ibuprofen is leaving the body is negative 34.754 milligrams per hour. When we use a delta t of one thousandth of an hour, the average rate at which ibuprofen is leaving the body is negative 34.807 milligrams per hour. When we use a delta t of one ten thousandth of an hour, the average rate at which ibuprofen is leaving the body is negative 34.812 milligrams per hour. And when we use a delta t of one hundred thousandth of an hour, the average rate at which ibuprofen is leaving the body is negative 34.813 milligrams per hour. So as we make the time interval smaller, these average rates appear to be getting closer to a particular number, roughly negative 34.813 milligrams per hour. To summarize what we have observed, as we look at shorter and shorter time intervals, the graph of f of t looks more and more like a straight line. It is getting closer to having a constant rate of change. As this happens, the successive average rates of change are getting closer to a particular number. In more formal notation, we write f of 4 plus delta t minus f of 4 all divided by delta t to show the average rates of change. We write delta t goes to 0 to represent the decreasing length of the time intervals. And we write the limit to indicate the number that these are all getting closer to. It's important to remember that the average rate of change in this scenario requires that there be a change in time. So the limit isn't itself an average rate of change. It's a number that the average rates of change are approaching. From our work, we saw that these average rates of change were getting closer to roughly negative 34.813 milligrams per hour. This limiting value, which we write as f prime of 4, is the instantaneous rate of change of f of t with respect to t at t equals 4 hours which we also call the derivative of f of t at t equals 4.